We've seen in KwaZulu Natal now, Community Policing Forum Board in KwaZulu Natal has called on communities to play a greater role in crime prevention. It comes amid several inc incidences of deadly gun violence where several people were killed in mass shootings in KZN. This was in recent weeks. So five suspects were shot and they were killed during a shootout, which uh, police last week. Um, while suspected drug dealer was arrested during an intelligence driven operation. So we're also going to unpack what that means in a South African context. Let's uh, also look at some of the drivers behind gun violence. For that, we're joined by Dr. Lufuno Sadiki, criminal, uh, criminology lecturer rather at the University of Pretoria. A very good afternoon to you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on the ACBC. Good afternoon and thank you so much for having me. Dr. Sadiqi, let's first get your reaction to the announcement that convicted murderer and rapist Tabo Besto escaped from custody at the Mangun Correctional Facility. He has now been rearrested. I think that's it's great news that he's been arrested. But like the previous speaker spoke about, that it really sheds a very bad light on the South African police. Um, our ineffective border control, um, the Department of Correctional Services, as well as the Department of Home Affairs. There's a lack of synergy. All these departments cannot operate in silo. And it also speaks to the lack of crime intelligence in the country. So I think, honestly, it's good that he's been arrested, and we hope that he'll actually be brought back to South Africa. On the back of that, the fact that Best escaped... Um, from prison a year ago. I mean, what does it say about the country's law enforcement agencies at this point? I honestly think that it speaks about the lack of inefficiency, um, negligence, corruption. I mean, how does one escape and only after a year it's discovered? I think it also speaks about a lack of crime intelligence because I think it would have been picked up by the crime intelligence and also how our South African police um, services as well as law enforcement agencies are rather reactive rather than proactive. I think honestly, we have a lot of work to do in terms of training and investigative capacity, but also ensuring that the Justice Department works collectively and not in silo. Mm, absolutely, which now brings our attention to, you know, incidences that have been occurring in other parts of the country in Durban this time around, um, with the recent uh, increase of, of mass shootings being reported there. So Durban has now seen this number of mass shootings in, in KZN in recent weeks. Uh, we're wondering, what are some of the drivers of gun violence? And would you say that the crime prevention in Bezo that the minister has been hosting is in fact working? Thank you for your question. Um, I think before we can even talk about the increase in gun violence in South Africa or KZN, we also need to look at how the history of our country. Mm. I think honestly, we're a violent country based on our history, the legacy of apartheid. The apartheid government itself was very brutal. And this resulted in communities also responding in very violent manners. So you find that violence has sort of like become embedded in our socioeconomic conditions or it forms part of our, of our social fabric where it sort of like emanates in a lot of contexts of the crimes that actually take place. And in some of the drivers, we have to look at, you know, there's an increase in the circulation of illegal firearms. It's so easy for an individual on the street to actually get access to firearms. And this could be as a result of, you know, lack of securities in police stations. Last year, we had 158 guns stolen from one police station. Also, firearms that are coming from the private security itself or even stolen from civilians. And lately, we've also seen an increase in organized criminal networks. And we know that with cr organized crime, there's a lot of use of violence and easy access of illegal firearms. So that circulation of guns that we have in the country sort of like contributes to gun violence in the country. And with regards to your second question, with regards to the Mbizo, it's good that the minister is having talks with communities. But the most important thing is to prioritize building a relationship and trust with community members. Because community members know who these individuals are that are committing crime. They might be scared to speak up due to inactivity of the police 
or knowing that these individuals will get away with it. So as much as we can have imbezos, there needs to be action as well from the police. They need to show us that they are really doing their job, that they care, but also involve the broader criminal justice system because it's easy to arrest a person, but securing conviction and even low conviction rate sort of like contributes to, you know, an increase in gun violence, people knowing that they can get away with it. So my last comment on the Mbizo is that let's prioritize, you know, the trust between the community members and the police so they can proactively work together, not only to identify and arrest, but to also prosecute and convict these individuals. Yeah, you spoke about history and context being so important and in, in trying to understand, you know, how, we, how we've gotten to this point. Um, there's some contributing factors as well, social, cultural. I even want to look at the uh, perceived spatial distribution within the area, perhaps how that influences what is occurring there and, and trying to understand the violence and crime there. What's been reflected on that front? How do we begin to also tackle those systemic issues that you alluded to earlier on to change this? I think it will really take multiple factors or multiple stakeholders working together. Because as much as I alluded to the fact that, you know, context, political history, you also have high rate of unemployment. We also have the highest rate of inequality. You know, those structural mm -hmm. socioeconomic factors that also contribute to the high level of violence as well as gu gun violence in the country. But also whatever solutions we come up with, they have to be context specific because KZN might not be similar to Gauteng and it might not be similar to Limpopo. So whatever solutions we come up with, we have to look at what exactly is happening in KZN. How different is it from Limpopo or how different is it from Pumalanga? So that solutions can also address the specific context or specific structural factors that contribute and lastly it will definitely take everybody multiple agencies coming together the criminal justice system you know mm -hmm. um, community members civil society law enforcement private security so it would really take a holistic you know solution in order to be able to prevent this type of crime from happening dr lafuno sadiki thank you for your time here on the acbc let's uh, perhaps use this as a conversation started to continue to highlight you know what is happening in the country perhaps also find ways um, to address not only the systemic issues but the ripple effects they are as well again dr lufuno sadiki is a criminology lecturer at the university of pretoria um just on uh, speaking about crime prevention this comes on the back of several incidents that occurred in and around the country. This uh, time our focus was on the shootings in Durban and KZN that occurred within recent weeks. Again, thank you to her for her time.